Make sure your pilots made out that helicopter they're shooting at. So hi there guys, um, well we've been posted to Lingor and um, I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the new map um, and at the same time give you a chance to look at some of the new vehicles. Uh, the boys have been offloading them off the Hercs, um, getting ready to deploy. Uh, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour and show you, show you what's going on. So we're at the busy Lingor airbase and we haven't been here long, it's pretty unprepared but um, you see we've got patrols set up and um, the flyboys are doing their best to annoy the hell out of us every fucking five minutes. Anyway, so this is the new Jackal we've got worked on, um, the Woodland Camo variant obviously. Uh, you notice a few different changes, a few little cosmetic tweaks. So I thought I'd take it for a quick spin and give you guys a bit of a road show. So let's get away from this airbase and uh, I'll get a bit of peace and quiet. Right, let's make a move. So you can see we've got PIP in place now, so we've got a little reverse camera so we can see what's behind us, really useful. Apologise for the flickering, that's my SLI. Um, you won't see that again, obviously you can have that. Um, we've done a bit of work, we've put a radio in the back, there's a radio rack there now. Um, we've got a new model, new M240, uh, an L7 for the UK boys out there. Uh, that's from Redis, thanks very much at VCB. Generally, we've had a good play with the textures and um, tried to do our best internally to bring them up to A3 standards. Just get a bit of space between us and those uh, bloody areas. Anybody remember played A3? Um, sorry, played a Lingo on A2 will remember this. This particular crossing was a nightmare. <laughs> we could never get across here without getting murdered. Right. There we go, we'll pick a spot here. There we go, so what you can see, um, slightly high res textures. Uh, we've done our best to try and improve that. Um, we've got some new functionality, so we've got um, the option to jump bail out left or right. Uh, we can open or close um, doors. Uh, the doors, they do function. Um, and if we try and actually, um, if you try and shoot the back of that, it that's actually it has a, a, a geometry lot as well. So if um, <laughs> basically you can take cover behind it, basically it won't it won't withstand sort of 50 cows, but it will take a 5.6 and some 7.62. Um, we've remodelled a lot of the vehicle. We've put our own packs on the back. You'll recognise the packs from the equipment mod. Um, slightly higher res GMGs. Got a nice, nice little feature at the back now, so we've got a little bit of a jump seat at the back. So the problem with the Jackal is that you can only get two passengers in the back, a gunner, commander and driver, which often leaves a few guys out in the field. So let's say you're stuck in a field, you want to jump in the back. You've got a little boost seat now for the uh, one, one, one other player that you can get back to base in one piece. It's a nice little feature. And it's animated as well, it looks quite cool. So, anyway, there we go. Um, as we've done, let's have a look at that radio. So the uh, rear doors work as well, just like the front doors, they're fully functioning. Again, they've got a geometry lod, so they, they'll take a round. Put the radio rack in. Um, I'm not sure if this is a work in progress or if this is the finished article, but they've done a lot of work to try and get that looking as realistic as we can. The problem we've got with this model, because it's got a um, quite a heavy duty interior, it's actually quite a, an intensive bit of kit, there's a lot of vertices on this, so we're at the limit of what we can do within Armour 3, I'm told by the experts. So um, yeah, we've, we've done our best to sort of get it as detailed as possible without going over the top. What else have we done? So. Um, yeah, we put some suspension on. I don't know if you guys realise, but the original Armour 2 model was static. There were, the wheels had no actual suspension. It just used to bounce up and down. So what we've got now, I don't know if I can simulate this, but I'll do my best. The wheels actually function and actually have... Um, they'll actually... Uh, you can see them moving up and down inside the chassis, uh, which is nice. So I'm just trying to get some bumps. Oh! Pretty sure that used to be a causeway there. It's interesting, he's raised the water level. Blimey. Gonna get across. 
<laughs> That's new, wasn't expecting that. Right. Yeah, this is my first time loading the A3 Lingle map, but if you can't already tell, so I've got no idea. Right, let's see if we can find another way. I need to find some rocks to really show you guys these um, these animated these animated wheels. Hang on. Now you get to see me drive my game manager. We've messed around with the gear ratios. Um, the real Jack has got a quite incredible level of agility actually and it's actually a bit of a beast actually it's very very much quicker than you think it would be um, but to give the, the hill climb ability we've had to put in a whole load of uh, sort of low ratio gears and it does make it a bit sluggish to start off but once you get going it will shift real fast there you go you see the wheels in action there so as it goes over bumps and, and um, rocky territory the actual wheels function and so you've got an active suspension there so it's really nice to drive it's much smoother than the old one um, definitely no wobble at high speed. Anybody from the first start, uh, Jack and Paul, to remember the wobbles. Um, and I think Jamie, Major Goodson, was one of the first guys to get that fixed. Actually, so that's good. And um, we've managed to build on that and improve the suspension a bit, give it a bit of a nicer feel. And uh, I guess I'm running out of things to say now. What, I might, what you guys might not realise is we've also done some work on some coyotes. Um, so I'll whack one of those down, and you can have a good look at that as well. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys realise, but the, the, the British Army also have a uh, six-wheel variant. Uh, it's like a logistic support vehicle, be it really. Um, nice thing about it is it's um, it gives us the ability to um, have, have a vehicle that will take an entire section, which is quite nice. So I'll just put one of those down. I did the desert ones as well, so you can see what they look like. Um, these are the supports. So these are like logistics vehicles. So if you um, these act like uh, refuel trucks or rearm trucks, so they'll actually um, act as a rearm function. And then we've also got um, the more common variant, which has got a passenger functionality. Uh, so the good thing with these, um, which one is it? There is, yeah. So you can jump in the back of these, and these will take um, six guys in the back, uh, plus the two passengers, so that's the full section. Um, so you can have a crew and a section get in and out of the OP uh, really easily as I said these ones over here these have got the functionality to um, rearm and refuel your vehicle I think they had a really nice job modeling these they look really pretty these original models were from um, Soldierman Grey at 16 AA so we're really grateful for that we've done a significant amount of tweaking with them and messing around with them completely changed them really but but um, he gave us the, uh, the kickstart to get them going um, TAP's also managed to get a quite clever little way of, um, that's life tap, as, um, identifying the vehicles. One of the silly things you get in game, the trouble with a game like this is you lose a, your visual spatial, the sort of uh, spatial awareness is a bit crap really, so you, you tend to forget where you park your vehicle. When there's three or four in a convoy, you're not quite sure which one's yours when you go back to get it. Well, the number's there, that's a random number uh, that will automatically go up every time you're dropping your vehicle down and you spawn a new vehicle. So you can also always find the vehicle you were in, and you'll know which one you came from, so 105. 106, this one's just say 107. So it's not random, is it? It's sequential, but you know what I mean. It, it, it automatically picks itself up from 101 onwards. It's a nice little feature we're building. Um, uh, yeah, we've got some sounds from um, Laxman. Um, so if I show you the, the gun effects, some nice new 50 cal sounds. I'm really pleased with those. A bit more meaty, a bit more realistic. And, um, these are a bit nippy actually, these are um, the very, very flat trajectory. So really GMG does what it says it does in the can. And one thing we've also done is it, once you've um if you've emptied your GMG, I'll just get back in again. Right, I'm in the logistics vehicle, so you can see it's rearming itself. And if you were to do that in the normal vehicle, um, it doesn't automatically reload. You have to hit the R key to reload it, and it's got ammunition in the inventory and it'll actually take that ammunition out of the inventory 
and it'll then actually apply it. So it's a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit like the old Ace 2 where you could carry ammo bags. And what you could do is we can actually take these out. So you, if you, you can actually drop these on the ground and somewhere it should be spawned. There we go, a case of ammo. So I can now rearm my, I can manually rearm my vehicles um, in the field, which is a little bit nice, a bit of a nice feature. So there you go, guys. Thought I'd give you just a quick heads up, and um, apologies for the crap video. There's no script in this, um, and if I'm honest with you, this isn't really my thing. So um, I just thought it'd be useful to show you guys. Anyway, have fun. Cheers.